We are back for another week. I want to say thank you to those of you that have been following along for the last little while. Appreciate all the comments. So this week's effort is going to be about looking at the Pontiac 400 with the 6X4 heads. Um, a lot of people are asking about compression ratios and is it worth zero decking? Is it worth doing flat top pistons? Is it worth this? Is it worth that? We're going to look at that today. The engine we used is something we had a lot of data on. Uh, this is basically a 68400 with a Crane 289-641 cam. This is a roller cam, it's a really nice cam, pretty high lift, uh, 0.558 single pattern cam, something that we don't really do. Um, I talked to another builder on Facebook about that as well, he's not really a, a single pattern guy, but sometimes when it works, it works. And the cam he recommended was the uh, Comp Cam 268H. It's a very similar cut pattern to what we use in our TPI cars, so I'm really excited to see what that does in like the 350 Pontiacs and the 400 Pontiacs. It should be a really, really nice cam. So I want to talk a little bit about the numbers we're using here. So the thing we need to think about here is the 6X4s range from a 91 to 94cc. We're going to use 92cc because that's kind of the middle. The piston dome, a lot of people use dished pistons to try lower compression ratio to make sure they can run their engines. Uh, that said, I've set this to minus 14cc, which is a pretty standard uh, Pontiac aftermarket piston. We're also using Butler's basic uh, head gasket. This is a 0.045 head gasket. At least that's what it crushes down to. There's smaller head gaskets, and we'll look at those later. Finally, we're going to go with a 0.02 uh, deck clearance. There's a little bit of wiggle room here. This depends on the deck height, the piston uh, height, with the wrist pins, the rods. Um, there's a lot of factors to go into this, so it's really important you measure this for your specific engine. But we're going to use 0.02 because that's kind of just the median of where we ended up for the most part. So if you look here, we're sitting at a 7.9 to 1 compression ratio. That is not great. We're going to use the old calc value. Let that punch in. Hit OK. And we see here we have some decent numbers. I mean, 411 horsepower, 5500 RPM. That's not terrible. Um, and you see the spark advance. There's no risk of knock. This is running 93 octane with super low compression. So something to think about too is you might actually be hurting your engine a little more with higher octane if you don't need it. Um, it just ruins the performance sometimes. But generally, just run what octane your engine wants to run. So we see our peaks look really nice. The averages also look fairly good. Um, again, we're using a 1,500 to 7,000 RPM range because in our past videos, we use that range. And again, we're using 1,500 to 7,000 RPMs uh, range. I know Pontiacs don't really like that higher range, but that said, we're using that just to keep consistency across all our videos. So you can go back and check out our old ones like the one on the card above. But looking on the graph, we see a really nice long torque curve and a nice long horsepower curve. Let's bump the compression up, though. You know, I probably should mention as well, this can might be a lot too big for the 7.9 to 1 compression ratio. I wouldn't run this cam in less than like a 925, maybe even a 9. But that really speaks to the dynamic compression ratios, and we can talk about that another time if you guys want to. So a fairly common thing to do with these engines also is to throw flat top pistons in as well as a smaller uh, crush head gasket, something like a 0.03 head gasket. And they do get a little smaller than that, but nothing that I can really speak to. So our same 92 flat tops, 0 0.03, 0 0.02. So that puts us up to 9 to 1. This is pretty much where you want to be. Um, this is a great spot to be. But let's hit the calculated value. 906, OK. Calculate performance, and this is what we end up with. I mean, that's a pretty solid gain across the board, right? I mean, from start to finish. You know, we gain just over a point of compression, and it really makes the engine wake up. 9 to 1 is about where I'd want to be. 9 to 5 is what I'd like. 9 to 5 is pushing it, I think, with stock iron heads. Um, 10 to 1 is really where I want to be, though. If you run an E85, it's possible. Um, you can even run 93 and probably be safe, but... Yeah, it's hard to recommend that kind of stuff because each engine is really different and you have to run your engine to see how it likes to be ran. So the gains under 3,500 RPM are really minimal. If you're going to be just kind of driving your car around and not beating on it, the lower compression ratio might actually be a great thing for you. And if that's the case, a smaller cam is also a better option, like the 2801 or something like that. But if you're going to beat on this engine at all, higher compression ratios do burn fuel more efficiently. I don't care what anybody says. You can stuff the same amount of fuel in a tighter space, it's going to burn hotter, it's going to burn, and it's going to make a bigger boom. That's just how it is. There's a reason why you're going from 125 PSI in a chamber to 180 PSI in a chamber. The fuel is burning more efficiently, and it's creating a larger boom and larger pressures inside that cylinder. 
And again, this is an engine I would run on like 89 octane and not even think about it. So then there are the guys that are willing to do it all, right? We're gonna mill the heads, we're gonna zero deck the block, run flat top pistons, as well as a thin head gasket. So let's look at what that does. That should put us pretty high in the compression ratio scale, um, but still safe on 93. So 6x4s can usually be milled down to about 85 cc in the heads. Um, we're gonna flat tops, so we're gonna run 03 and a zero deck. Something to think about the zero deck. So you are actually taking material away from your block and taking material away from your heads. That means your piston to valve clearances will definitely change. So be extremely mindful of your lifts when doing that. I wouldn't even guarantee this would work in an, in an engine. This is a really high lift for such a low clearance engine. Um, this is not something I'd recommend doing. Maybe somebody has done it. Um, personally, I would run a lower lift and longer duration in this kind of combination, but I don't want to change anything. And this is all just kind of looking at things, so let's take a peek at what it does. So 10.07 is where we end up. So basically we have jumped from eight to nine to 10. So we can see basically evenly what's happening across each compression point. Mind you, each compression point is gained just a hair, little by little over each. So keep that in mind. So mind you, these average numbers that we're looking at right now are gonna be versus the nine to one compression ratio. So they're already pretty dang good. Jasper came to visit. If you get the reference for his name, comment down below and let me know. So again, we see gains all across the entire map. Um, that said, we're gonna see a lot more spark knock as those gains are happening because of the increased compression and the lower octane. You, know, you probably go with 93 in this, um, but I might even push it to E85 just to feel a little safer about my investment. But again, the piston to valve clearance is likely gonna be a problem. But look at these gains. I mean, we're going from uh, 459 peak to a 472 peak and 432 to 446 peak. Now let's look at the chart. And again, we see about the same gains, you know, just across the board. So again, if you're looking under 3,500 RPM, it's not really worth making the changes. That said, let's look at the start of all of this versus where we ended up. If you're starting at a point of like 7.9 to one and going to 10, dude, it's worth it. If you're starting from 7.9 and going to nine, I'd say that's worth it. If you're going from nine to 10, I would say it's not worth the change. Um, because of all the extra expense. You're better off getting a set of like 16 heads instead and doing it that way. And actually, let's run that as our bonus test. The 16 heads would be pretty much unrunnable unless you have run E85 or some like crazy high octane gas. Let's take a look at what it actually does if we just went balls to the wall crazy with this thing. So here are the head specs comparing the two. The uh, 16 heads definitely flow less, so we'll see what that actually does with the increased compression ratio. So the increased compression ratio will put us at so these are 72 cc heads. We are going 0 0.03 and 0 deck, 11 and a half to one compression ratio of. So remember, this is the all out 6x4 against a stock set of 16 heads. These 16 heads basically gain everywhere. Something you need to consider is what are you building for? Would I run these 16 heads? Yeah, probably. But we also have E85 in my area for dirt cheap, so it's not a big deal. You might need to run the 6x4s in a 9 to 1, which is what I would recommend. Because that way you actually can drive the stupid thing whenever you feel like, instead of having to look for gas, look for E85, and just fight that whole fight. But if there's any tests you guys want to see, comment down below and let me know. I'm more than happy to knock those stuff out for you. We're trying to do one of these a week. So please subscribe for that, and have a good one, and I will see you on the road.